well, well, who'd have thought it? I suppose I have to hand it to you for a double-time worker. Still waters certainly run deep in your case. How did you manage it? Lucky for you I had influenza. Now I know how you spent your days. Tennis lessons my eye. You might have told me. Yes, I'm sorry. And now he says he wants to marry you as soon as possible. Lucky again. And lucky you have no family to ask awkward questions. Lucky you. Oh, well, it's nothing to do with me anymore. No. I just wonder what his friends will think. Oh, well, I guess that's his problem. I suppose you realize he's years older than you. Well, he's only 42 and I'm old for my age. <laughs> you certainly are. Tell me, my dear, have you been doing anything you shouldn't? I don't know what you mean. Oh, well, never mind. I always said that English girls were dark horses for all their hockey-playing attitudes. Your beau didn't even ask me to the wedding. Well, I don't think he wants anyone. Just the two of us, no guests, and you'll have sailed by then. I just hope you know what you're doing. He's a difficult man, they say, and you'll have to adapt yourself to his ways. You'll have your work cut out as mistress of Manderley, and frankly, my dear, I can't see you doing it. You haven't got the experience. You don't know that milieu. Why, you can scarcely string two sentences together at my bridge tees. What are you going to say to all his friends? The Manderley parties were famous when she was alive. What parties? Hasn't he told you about them? I wonder why not. Naturally, I hope you'll be happy. And I grant you he's a very attractive creature. But I'm just so afraid you're making a very big mistake. And one that you regret bitterly. You know why he's marrying you, don't you? He wants company, that's all. Don't flatter yourself he's in love with you. That great empty place just gets on his nerves. He wants company. Simple, undemanding company. That's why he chose you, my dear. those shops that sell everything, you know. Just by the counter, there were some postcard photographs. Well, not very good ones, the colours were all wrong. But one of them was so breathtaking. It was the most breathtaking place I'd ever seen. It was a country house, surrounded by trees with green lawns stretching down to the sea. Instead of buying sweets, I bought that postcard. It cost half my weekly pocket money. I asked the old shop lady what the picture was meant to be. Why? That's Mandalay, she said. You're Mandalay. feeling? Nervous. Don't be. We're almost there now. I expect you want your tea. Why don't you take off that Macintosh? It hasn't rained at all down here. And put that little fur thing straight. What lamb? I bustled you down here so fast. We should have stopped in London and got you some clothes. Doesn't matter to me. It's 
long as you don't mind. Well, so we can think of nothing but clothes. I hope I won't let you down too badly. Let me down? How on earth could you let me down? So ignorant about things. What things? Dinner parties, entertaining things like that. I don't know what to say, what to do, what spoons and forks to use, what, what to order, what to prepare. I won't know anything. You just be yourself and everyone will adore you. You see those trees on the brow of that hill? That's Mandalay in there. Those are the woods. <laughs> Danvers will take care of all that. Who's Mrs. Danvers? The housekeeper. Marvellous woman. You leave everything to her. She may be a little bit stiff at first, I dare say. It's just her manner. You mustn't take it to heart. Ah. Here we are. 